One of the important purposes of accounting is to protect businesses and stakeholders from fraud. Fraud is any criminal deception with the intent to get personal gain. In other words, it's when a person knowingly deceives other people in order to gain some benefit. Sometimes fraud is committed when an employee or management reports false information on their financial reports to lead stakeholders to believe that the company is doing better than it really is. Gap rules and auditors exist to help reduce the risk of this kind of fraud, but they aren't perfect and they don't catch all fraud schemes all of the time. Sometimes fraud is committed when employees or outside individuals steal money or assets from the company. To help prevent theft of assets, companies often establish systems and procedures to protect company assets. These are known as internal controls. Because there are so many unique and creative ways for individuals to commit fraud against a company or its stakeholders, it can be very difficult to identify a potential fraud and prevent it. One tool that often helps to identify the potential for fraud and help mitigate it is known as the fraud triangle. The fraud triangle operates on the idea that there are three core ingredients to every fraud case, no matter what kind of fraud or who committed it. These three ingredients are pressure, rationalization, and opportunity. Pressure is based on the belief that people are generally good and that they won't choose to make poor choices like deceive others or commit fraud unless they feel some kind of external pressure that makes them feel they have to do it. Oftentimes these pressures are financial pressures. Perhaps the person is living beyond their means and can't pay their bills. Maybe they have a sudden crisis like a divorce or medical illness that makes it hard for them to survive financially. Maybe they have an addiction problem that is compelling them to seek more money. Whatever the reason, if a person feels pressure to come up with money quickly, they are more likely to commit fraud. Rationalization also assumes that a person is inherently good and, therefore, wouldn't choose to do something they feel would be morally wrong, like committing fraud. That means that in order for a person to commit fraud, they must first convince themselves that what they are doing is right. Maybe they tell themselves that they deserve what they are taking because of the years that they have been working for the company. Or maybe they convince themselves that the company deserves the crime because of how the company treats its employees. Maybe they justify that they are just borrowing a stolen asset and intend to pay it back later. Whatever their justification, this rationalizing allows them to feel better about themselves for committing a crime and is an essential part of fraud. If a person never convinces themselves that it's okay, then they won't do it. Opportunity says that even if a person feels pressure to commit fraud and has convinced themselves that it's okay, they still won't do it unless there is a way provided for them to commit the crime. Each of these three pieces of the fraud triangle are essential to the creation of a fraud crime, and each of them must all be present at the same time in order for a fraud to be committed. If even one ingredient is missing, it will be impossible for a fraud to occur. Although the fraud triangle was created to explain business fraud, this same model works in any other situations for fraud as well. Let's look at an example from the life of a student. Cheating. Cheating is where a student deceives the teacher to think that the student did their own original work when they didn't. They do this in order to get a better grade for themselves. So cheating is a deception with the intent to get personal gain. Or in other words, cheating is a form of fraud. I'll bet you never thought of it that way before. So let's see how the fraud triangle fits into the scenario of cheating. First, are there any outside pressures that would cause a student to want to cheat? Of course there are. Parents sometimes put pressure on students to achieve high scores. Sports teams have expectations for certain grades in order to qualify to play. Colleges often have minimum grade requirements for applications and scholarships. There are all kinds of pressures that would make a student want to cheat. So how do students rationalize cheating when they know that it is morally wrong? They might think that most students do it, so it's okay. They might say that the teacher didn't specifically say they couldn't do it, so that makes it okay. There are many ways a student could make cheating sound okay, even if it's not. The last piece of the fraud triangle is the important one. Opportunity. Even if a student has tremendous pressure, and they rationalize that cheating is okay, if a teacher doesn't provide them a way to cheat, they can't. Perhaps the teacher had a meeting and left the room while they were taking the test. Or... Maybe the teacher let them take the test from home. Maybe the teacher doesn't look closely at assignments so students can share assignments easily. Whatever the case, if a teacher provides the opportunity, it is easier for the student to commit fraud. So there are the three parts of the fraud triangle in action. Pressure, 
rationalization, and opportunity. The amazing thing about the fraud triangle is that all three parts must be present or the fraud cannot occur. For example, if a student has no pressure to obtain higher grades, even if they could rationalize their behavior and the opportunity to cheat existed, they wouldn't have a need to do it. And if the student felt pressure and saw an opportunity, but couldn't or wouldn't justify cheating, they wouldn't do it either. And even if a student felt pressure to cheat and was willing to rationalize it, they still can't cheat if their teacher is thorough and doesn't give them the opportunity. Now, oftentimes, neither the teacher nor the student can prevent outside pressures. These are just inherent and often uncontrollable. But the student can choose to be aware of the rationalization and choose to avoid those thoughts when they occur. In this way, a student has control to prevent fraud. It's the same with employees. The only real part of the triangle they can readily control is the rationalization, and by controlling their thoughts, they can prevent falling into fraud. Opportunity is the one place the teacher can control. They can put processes and procedures in place to help prevent a student from ever being in a situation where they could commit fraud. This helps good students stay honest. The same is true with businesses. Businesses can put controls in place to help prevent opportunities to commit fraud. The task to create and maintain good controls often falls on accountants since fraud typically involves finances, assets, and financial reporting. That is why it is so important for accountants to be aware of fraud and the ways to prevent it, like the fraud triangle. To learn more about fraud, internal controls, and other accounting topics, check out more of my videos on YouTube or visit ToriNorman.com.